Good morning and welcome to this interview of the Global Donor Platform for Rural Development, which is part of the special series of interviews on food systems that we are promoting with our members. I am Maurizio Navarra, coordinator of the Donor Platform Secretariat. Joining us this morning is Iris Kreber, Head of Agriculture, Food Security, Land at the UK Foreign Development and Commonwealth Office, or FCDO. Iris has a vast experience in agriculture, food security, rural development and land. She is a development executive with more than 24 years of experience in development, private sector and government work, including 17 years in humanitarian and development aid. Iris is also the UK board member of the Global Donor Platform for Rural Development. Iris, welcome to today's interview. We are really pleased and honored to have you with us. So to start the interview, I will give the floor to Michelle Tang, our communications officer, for the first three questions. Over to you, Michelle. Thanks. I would like to add my own thank you uh, to you, Iris, uh, for being with us today. The UN Food System Summit has highlighted fundamental changes that will need to be made uh, in food systems over the next years. Now, donors have a critical role to play, of course, uh, in this scenario, which leads us uh, to our first question. And that is, what do you see um, are the most important messages and priorities that have emerged both from the Food System Summit and in the process leading up to it? Thank you, Iris, over to you. Thanks very much. Um, the Food System Summit and the run up over the last 18 months was of course an intensive and very detailed process, which it should be because it's about um, being context and country specific. Um, so there was all those national dialogues which will need to be looked at in terms of follow up at the national at the local level. However, looking at it from a very broad brush perspective. If nothing else, probably the most, the highest impact that could come from the Food System Summit is a clearer understanding, not of experts, but the average person of the huge risk and impact of agriculture and food systems on climate and not as the bad guy, but understanding the opportunities that are there, evidence-based in a simplified manner of how this can be turned around. As we all know, this is a hugely politicized, a hugely emotive and a hugely ideological subject to deal with. And I'm not sure the Food System Summit got quite there yet, but unless everybody understands what the opportunities are and how things can be changed, transformed under the pressure of time, because we're running out of it, then um, all talk about Food System Summit may remain academic and food systems in particular. We know it comes from a um, academic concept, food systems, systems thinking, rather complex, and that's why I'm emphasizing the average person in the street needs to understand what this is about and what can be done, and then um, engage with political decision makers so that it is actually done, and not in 50 years time, but from now on. Thank you so much for your answer for that. Um, yeah, increasing the global awareness um, of the average person's um, uh, awareness of where food system transformation, um, why is important. It, it definitely um, was a big win uh, from the summit. Now moving uh, over to what three things do you think uh, can be the most catalytic in bringing about the food systems transformation that is being called for? Where do you think we need to focus uh, to leverage change? Over, thank you. Um, thanks. The summit certainly put into stark relief um, the debates of specific stakeholder groups. And um, while they were talking and talking to each other, I think more could be done for these stakeholder groups, not just to speak with one voice, but to be mutually reinforcing. Why am I saying this? A lot of research is already happening. So aside from saying we need yet more research, that research, that what is already known in the academic circles needs to be simplified and made digestible for decision makers um, to have an impact and also for people um, who are the decision makers, voters and electorate to lobby for what they think is the right thing to do. Um, the Food System Summit made a good start, but 
there is a bit of a risk that academics are still talking to academics and other stakeholder groups are also still talking in silos. There is a lot more debate now, but we need to get beyond that. And especially with a very complex and complicated um, theme such as food systems to make this palatable and something to engage with um, for those that can make a difference, I think more needs to be done. Yeah, that is very interesting. Um, getting not just academics, uh, but a wider uh, focus to, to talk to each other. Um, and which brings us to my last question uh, on my part. Um, and that is where should donors themselves focus their efforts and how might this be different from what has been supported uh, uh, in the past? Why would this moment in time be different uh, from previously? Over to you, thank you. Thanks. Um, well, all the players who contributed to the Food Systems Summit can actually ensure that this is going to be different from the past. As I said before, um, there is not so much need for yet a lot more research to oil the wheels of that self-perpetuating machine, but there is a lot of really good research out there already that needs to be got into action, be, be that via governments, but even more so via the private sector, we food systems who are very good at explaining the distribution system, the markets, the incentives that influence all levels, the producer, the intermediary, the, um, the, the consumer, and, and this needs to be better communicated. Who can do what and needs to do what and why? The Food System Summit itself quietly stayed away from um, the polytonomy of things and trying to change incentive schemes. But unless we get to that, this is not going to happen. And that, again, I'm repeating myself, but brings me back to simplifying my to act, understand, and I make us today and talk to them about this highly academic concept of food systems. I'm not sure I'm going to land. My colleagues in other government departments and other governments say the same thing because you have political decision makers, very few of whom have any idea of what food and art is all about and when you have a systems approach all of a sudden everything is very complicated and complex while it may accurately depict what is happening you also find it hard to establish owners for specific actions and accountability this is something where um research into action so not the research but that making things understandable, palatable, and helping change incentives towards action. That is the important thing that needs to happen now. We thanks Iris for, for this uh, very, very interesting answers, also underlining the importance of uh, communications, advocacy, and awareness raising uh, to, make, uh, to make concepts and, and content palatable as much as possible. So this brings me to the fourth question on uh, the issue of the summit that has generated a lot of discussions around the need for systemic change. The fact that we need to go to a uh, food systems perspective rather than just thinking about food security and, and nutrition. What do you think this means and what are the implications for donor funding and programming, Iris? Over to you. When you look at the systems and you look at what's currently being funded, and I don't think the UK is a very big exception to that, and we do an annual ARC portfolio review of our order programs to see how they're doing, and they're doing reasonably well, for example, on incorporating things like climate change. However, um, like most other order programs, um, we are doing not quite as well as addressing the underlying incentives of various players. Um, and we also not doing quite as well as we need to, not always looking at the productivity end only, because it's an established paradigm, productivity needs to increase, we want to feed the 10 billion um, in 2050, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but there is relatively less focus on the rest of the supply chain, on the rest of the food system. Um, if, if you imagine something mind boggling, like one third of all globally food produced food being lost or wasted, um, then you think, why don't we start with that? Then we do not have to try and um, squeeze ever more productivity out of the soil if we can just cut that one third of 
of, of food loss and waste that's pre, peri, post harvest, and of course, a large chunk, at least in um, rich countries, is lost um, on the consumer side. Um, I just read an update on how much food is annually um, wasted in households in the UK. Um, that's something where we can all act. Um, that's also something where incentivizing policies can do a lot more. So looking along the food systems, um, there might be value in looking at the incentives and why things remain as they are, moving a little bit away uh, from only looking at the productivity angle, coming to grips with what does it mean to be more climate smart in agriculture, um, then, um, and again, that brings us back to incentives um, and, and better understanding what the research actually says and what the good practice is, um, um, having policies that incentivize the shift. Um, then if we can, if we can do start doing more on those key pressure points, we'll certainly get somewhere really soon. The big challenges, of course, having a food systems approach while not trying to change every little bit of the system over, overnight, because that would be doomed to failure. We need to um, start where the pressure points are starkest and where the, the mileage is um, most obvious to be got. I hope that's clear. That's very clear, Iris. Now, you, you have mentioned in your first answer, but also in your previous answer, the importance of uh, liaising and, and linking uh, food systems with perspective with environmental degradation, in particular climate change and the need also to strengthen climate smart agriculture approaches. Now, given that the UK is hosting uh, the next COP26 in, in a month or so, would you like to give some reflections on the link between food systems and the wider climate agenda, some aspects and perspectives you already provided uh, in, in these answers, but would you like to add anything more to that? Yeah, maybe maybe um, a word about what is an absolutely ideological debate, as you will know. Um, so, so those working on climate and environment, um, saving the planet, um, usually depict agriculture as one of the big culprits, agriculture and food systems. Um, yes, it contributes a massive amount to emissions. Um, everybody's castigating livestock value chains for methane emissions, et cetera, et cetera. So we know the story. But um, we'll also need to look at what is realistic, what do people understand, and how we make the shift towards agriculture being part of the solution. And that really requires a careful look. Earlier this year, we've worked with a number of development finance institutions and some um, investor cons um, consultancies in, in the space of climate change to better understand um, what is actually the physical climate risk in food systems and in agriculture. And my personal lesson was very few people know very little at all. So when you say we want to um, be able to um, turn the sector or climate smart or climate beneficial or nature positive, whatever paradigm you have at the moment, then first of all, we need to understand what are the risks? How can I know whether an um, investment in food systems makes the situation better if I have a very opaque or no understanding of the risk to a commodity, to a geography, or if I don't even know what the parameters are that I should be looking at. I know there are um, efforts to make this better, for example, by getting the private sector to report on its climate impacts. But unless we get to that better understanding, the reporting will just be a little bit like a corporate social responsibility report, but will not have much substance at all. So once we have a better understanding an established process on how to come to a consensus of what good looks like and is an investment we're making actually a positive adaptation or is it a maladaptation that we intend to be positive but we didn't understand the risk right so it's not doing a good thing at all um, until we have those that understanding and that must not only be with the academic researchers and the experts on climate and environment. It must be with those that take the decisions. Unless we manage that, we're not going to make much progress. That sounds modest, but it is actually a big step towards 
doing better, investing better and moving the dial. We are also looking at this under COP, getting more commitments on doing better based on better data, better analysis from the various stakeholders. As you know, we've also started looking at agricultural subsidies. There is a movement in the world to make them more beneficial for the well, planet, for people and prosperity. So what we would call the triple win, but there is a lot more to do. And ultimately, of course, how can we um, be more, how can we be more sustainably productive and feed the world in 2050 without cutting down yet more trees and going for massive agricultural extension. So those are the priorities we have under COP. And uh, while you may not always hear the term food systems, food systems are of course all over what we want to achieve through COP. And as you know, agriculture is one of the most controversially negotiated subjects in the COP process. So we've got, certainly got our work cut out for ourselves. Thanks. Many thanks, Iris, for these perspectives. And final two questions, talking about results and how to get there. Are there some changes that give you optimism that this transformation of food systems being called for is possible? I'll be very honest. When the term food systems first came up as a new paradigm out of academia, I said, for me, as somebody who leads a team of policy advisors who um, need to um, um, can advise our political decision makers, who, as I said, are more often than not, ex not experts in this subject, food systems is a very intangible term. And I said, I can rather explain to a generalist, an interested generalist, what the four dimensional food security is, than explain food systems. The eyes glaze over in no time. Other government colleagues and in, in, in partner governments have confirmed this. So food systems is a bit of a hairy issue because it is complex. That said, it explains consistently how things hang together and who needs to do what and what needs to happen. What gives me hope that things will now change is probably a very young generation, often still in school, sometimes just in university or have it getting a toehold into their professional career. Um, they see that their future is severely compromised un unless we make inroads on food systems really, really quickly. And I think we um, need to depend on them shouting it from the rooftops and pressurizing the generations now in decision making roles to actually act, act while there's still time. Wonderful, Iris. And this brings me to the last question. You talked about the role of donors and, and what the donors are called to do. Now, do you have some specific thoughts for the role of a network like the Global Donor Platform for Rural Development in particular, uh, related to the need for improved coordination of donor support, Iris? Thanks very much. Um, yes, that's, an, that's one that um, is always there on the agenda and in a world of increasing bilateralization of countries, probably more so than 10, 15 years ago. So the role of the Global Donor Platform to really make inroads on good coordination um, is one that's possibly more important than ever before. On the other hand, we've had a food system summit. There is now a process of looking into things, how things are going every two years. There's supposed to be a, um, a coordination and follow-up body by the Rome-based agencies jointly. But last time we checked, there wasn't anything yet substantively outside of the usual G7, G20, other nations, clubs, fora, to follow up on um, what the Food System Summit has delivered and should deliver in its follow-up. So there is probably really, really a strong role in there in donor coordination and possibly monitoring not just what the donors do, but what the world is doing on the back of this Food System Summit. So it doesn't join the number of UN summits where there was a lot of goodwill 
a lot of policy debate, but not that much follow up. I think that's where the key role of the donor platform may lie in the next few years to complement what the Rome based agencies as UN agencies will do and to have a donor perspective, a forum for debate and a, ideally a policy donor perspective on what is happening and how also donors can best bring their combined weight into the follow up. Thank you. No, thanks to you, Iris. This was wonderful. Uh, uh, thank you for sharing these insights on the Food System Summit and the Food Systems Agenda in general. Among the things you emphasize today is really that to transform food systems, we first need to understand them better. We need a clearer understanding and better communication and awareness raising. All this, the, all this course on food system has the risk of remaining academic and complex. This is the second big area that you underlined today. And the average person in the street needs to understand, and this will help this person engage better with her or his policymakers. We need to make understandable to decide what is the right thing to do to define our agenda for action ultimately, not only by the public actors, but also by the private sector. And this is even more important given the current debate on climate and the coming COP26. And for this, we need to get the right partnerships in place. You mentioned the right analysis, the right data, and that all of this needs to be pulled together in an integrated manner. Now with this, Iris, a big thanks to you for the time dedicated for this interview. We really appreciated your insights and we look forward to continuing the work together with you and colleagues from SCDO as part of the Global Donor Platform for Rural Development. Thanks again and have a wonderful day. Thanks very much for having me. Thanks to you, Iris. Goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Iris. I want to add my thanks.